Howdy everybody. Um, in this real quick little video, I would like to demonstrate two things. Number one, Newton's first law, which is also known as the law of inertia, and that is that this red cart in front of you won't go anywhere until I push it. And then I also want to show you how the position versus time of a moving object gives you a straight line graph and how the slope of that graph is the velocity. So this red cart, one of these fancy Pasco wireless smart carts, um, you see that Bluetooth indicator on there. It connects via the magic of Bluetooth to my laptop over here. And on the laptop, I currently have the Pasco capstone program open. And what it's going to do when I tell it to is record the position of my red cart here with respect to time. And so I want to show you two things. Number one, what that looks like. And I apologize for the glare and the little screen lines there. That's just the refresh rate of my monitor. Um, but I want to show you how a constantly moving object has a straight line graph on a position time graph. And they convince you that if it is moving at a constant speed, it is because there are no forces acting on it. So first, I'm just going to press record over here. And you'll notice a line on the screen at zero meters. That's because it's not going anywhere. If I make it go somewhere, now it's somewhere else. Notice that that line has moved to somewhere else. Okay, so let's stop that. Let's delete that data. All right, I'm going to pull it back here. And I'm going to give it a very slow push and make it move forward at a constant speed. And then simultaneously record the position as a function of time. So I'm going to press record, give it just a teeny tiny little bump. Notice that the position versus time data is going up in a straight line and then it hit the end of my track and then it went back down. And so I'm going to go ahead and click the stop button on this. Up until the time that it experienced, oh, pinch zoom doesn't work on here very well. Just kidding. Up until the time it started to reach the end of the track and then encounter that bumper at the end, notice that you get a very nice straight line. And if I use the tools on here, where I select a part of that straight line and then find the slope of that best fit line, so the program will tell me what the slope of that line is. It's 0 0.196. Um, and the units would be meters per second. So that's, that's not very fast. And my cart was moving, you know, not very fast. So let's do that again. Let's make it move faster. So I'm going to back it up. I'm going to press record again. Now it's going. Notice nothing's pushing it. And that line is going straight up. And then it hits the bumper at the bottom and slows down and then the data becomes curved. We'll get into that in just a second. So if I now find the slope of this best fit line by selecting it and drawing a box around it. So now that's a very nice straight line. The, the friction has a less of an effect if it's moving a little bit quicker. Um, and then notice the slope of that best fit line is like 0.44 meters per second. So almost, actually over twice as fast as it was before. But notice that as the position versus time was increasing, I wasn't doing anything to that cart. Once the cart is moving and it is in motion, I don't have to do anything to keep it moving. And then that thing there at the bottom exerts a force on it and it causes a change in its motion. And so the last thing I'm gonna show you going to prop my track up on one end, so I'm going to move this book out of the way. Those things roll really nicely off of tables, so when you're in class and if you're ever using those things, remember to put it on its back like that. All right, so now my track is propped up at one end and not the other. And so now it's got a slight decline in it, and we're going to repeat our experiment. So I'm going to set that thing right there. I'm going to need to set it. Whoa! Bonk. And my tripod is getting all wiggly on me. Sorry for anybody that just got a headache. 
All right, so I'm going to again collect position versus time data, and I'll back it up as soon as I let go. Hit record over here. All right, so that's recording. Let this thing go. Notice it speeds up as it goes down, and then it, it actually bumps the bottom twice. So now you can see a definite curvature in the position versus time data, and it's really noticeable when it bounces and then hits the bumper again and bounces again. It goes up a little bit and then back down. That means its motion is changing. And so if there are no forces acting on an object, then its position versus graph, versus time graph, sorry, is a straight line, and it moves with constant velocity. The slope of that line is the velocity. That's its definition. If it's got an external force acting on it, unbalanced force, like we did in that example, then the data is curved. Position versus time graph is curved. Now, we're going to deal with that more later on, but I just want you to know right now the difference between straight position versus time and curved position versus time. So here's kind of our summary. If the forces on something are balanced, and so that force diagram underneath the word balance shows you the first demo that I did, where you've got gravity going down and the normal force holding it up, you get constant velocity. On a position versus time graph, that looks like a constant slope. If the forces are unbalanced, like the green free body diagram I drew that shows a force push in um, towards the right, then you're going to get a changing slope. So for right now, we're only focused on the first situation, balance forces, but I do want you to be aware of the second one. We'll study that in more detail later on. Um, so what should we take away today? If it's moving, you don't have to do anything to keep it moving. If it's still, you don't have to do anything to keep it still. When you do push something, you're going to make its motion change. That's the takeaway for today. So let's get into the details, and I'll see you on the other side. Ta-ta.